Director Weekly Program Bilahdan, the show that brings Somali American to your living room. We all heard about the latest uh, study was done, huge study done by the University of Minnesota with uh, the help of a lot of people got involved in this study to check on autism in the Somali community. What is with the Somali community and the children and everybody was having a theory how why the Somali community have a higher prevalence in uh, uh, autism uh, in the community and how is it different than the Somali here, Somali in Sweden, Somali back home and how is compared to the mainstream. Uh, we have here guests that they really participated in that huge study. It's been almost three years to be done and, uh, and then now we have the result, we have the uh, numbers that tell us uh, exactly uh, the ratio uh, of uh, the number of uh, uh, autistic children in the Somali community. We have here uh, Anab uh, Gulad, she is a facilitator and communication coordinator. And uh, next to her we have Estahel Malan, and she also was a com uh, com community facilitator. And uh, welcome to Bulahdan, Anab. Thank you. Estahel, uh, welcome to Bulahdan. This you. is a huge study. We, we had you here when you were about to launch that study. Yes. Uh, you spent a lot of time, a lot of work, a lot of money. Uh, the result is up there, and everybody heard about it. And, uh, you know, one every 32, that's the ratio in the Somali community, one in every 36 uh, uh, in white uh, ch children. Tell us a little bit about uh, the study and how many, the, the range, the expansion, how many people were involved in this study, and also the, the age range that was uh, covered. Thank you, Ahmed, uh, for giving us the opportunity to come back to your show and talk about what we found in this study. Um, <coughs> this study um, looked at um, uh, children ages 7 to 9 in Minneapolis. Uh, we looked at records of children from school and clinical data of, um, again, children who were 7 to 9, uh, the year 2010. And what we wanted to look for, um, our, our research question was, are children of Somali descendants have a higher prevalence of uh, autism or autism spectrum disorder in comparison to other populations? Mm -hmm. And um, when we did that, we looked at uh, about 5,000 records. Um, and through that, um, we reviewed those records and they were reviewed by uh, clinicians. So this record, uh, clinical records? Clinical and, and school you records. And got them from where? Um, clini clinics in Minneapolis, clinics where children who live in Minneapolis go to. Um, we looked at um, school data, Minneapolis public school data, and we looked mm -hmm. at some charter schools. And so what we wanted to do was to get a good representation and catch all the children that fit in that age group for that year and, and um, in that year of 2010. Mm -hmm. And the model or the method we use is the same method that's used by uh, Centers for Disease Control. Which was part of the study or they funded, sponsor? Yes, they funded us, um, NIH and um, mm -hmm. Autism Speaks as well. And we followed their methodology, even though we added a component, the community engagement component was an added com com component mm -hmm. for the University of Minnesota. But as far as collecting and finding estimate of how many kids have ASD, we used that methodology. So that 2010, the sample from 2010, representative of all these years? It represented children who were seven to nine. Um, CDC uh, has a formula where they look at children um, similar age. They don't look at two years, but we needed a, a big population to draw from. Mm, so same. we used seven to nine. And the idea is to, by that age, you, you will know if the child has an ASD. So, uh, so when do people realize or detect their children have issues? Um, generally speaking, um, a, children, a child could be uh, labeled or identified as ASD at the age of two. Mm -hmm. What our study found, though, is even though we started with a one, one study question, we found more information by looking at those records. We expanded our research questions. So A, we looked at how many kids have an ASD. We looked at per population, per ethnicity. We also looked at what is the average year children are diagnosed mm -hmm. or labeled. And we found the average, it was five for all ethnicity. 
when in fact children could be um, labeled at two. So there's definitely a need to improve that. So the you know when the uh, children in the white uh, family uh, realize that ch there's something wrong with their child. Uh, I thought they realized earlier than when the Somali community, when Somali family realized their child has a child. Uh, I mean, has a has a an issue. Uh, I mean, like one is five and whatever other one is four. Is this an issue at all? When, when the family decided there's something wrong with their child, or they just brush it under the rug and you wait until they go to school, and then the school, uh, you know, uh, decide or uh, you know detect that the child has something wrong with them. Well, the, the five is an average. So when we looked at the data, they range from one and a half to nine years old. So. In average, it's five years old. And when you average it out, there wasn't much difference between white and Somali. Which is a good thing. Well, in some way, um, I mean, in some way, there isn't uh, that disparity that we normally see with you know white versus minority children, as mm -hmm. far as when children get labeled. If we look at the five-year-old uh, age, um, however. Um, children could be served potentially different programs and maybe perhaps when they when they are a little bit older is when Minneapolis so children get that the, diagnosis. The main story is to single out the Somali community or look at all ethnicity. We looked at all ethnic we looked one at of all which children. Is the Somali. We looked at all children in Minneapolis. Okay. So we found one in forty eight for the estimate. Mm -hmm. Um, That's in general. In general, in Minneapolis. in Minneapolis. When we broke it down into ethnicities, for Somalis, and it was one in 32, okay. the closest number to Somali was white, but they were not statistically significant. I see. So the white and Somali are highest, much higher, statistically significant higher, uh -huh. when in compared with the Latino and black. And the Asian and Native American was very small, so we, we didn't do this. Uh, yeah, the data the analysis on them because the sample was so small. So uh, the study uh, never entertained the, the question why, right? No, we didn't look into why. We, we, we just want a descriptive what's going on. Yes, we just wanted to know um, to answer that essential question of is there are Somalis higher. Our, do Somalis so experience... So we already know that in the beginning. Do we have to spend we, that much money to do it? <laughs> I could have told you that. <laughs> yes, but you need to have that in a way that confirms the way the government I see. comes up with such a data. So we can anecdotally say that, but we needed to do it in a research way. So how would that help the next step? Um, there all there's always a nexus that with like research. Like treatment, uh, for instance, preventive awareness. For, in, for instance, what we learned, the three major things we've learned, I've shared two of them with you about how we could improve when children are diagnosed. Uh -huh. Because early intervention is important in getting children for more hours of service or more, more hours of training and planned services. One in 48 may be a huge wake-up call for yeah. service providers and yeah. say, we got a problem. We need to increase access to service. We need to expand services. So there's a lot that can be learned from this number. Uh, I think I think what uh, what we learn from this number that is not a Somali thing. It's not a Somali thing. Yeah, it's definitely uh, high. Uh, Estelle, you know, uh, <coughs> I know there is a lot of debate, a lot of issue in the Somali community about what causes all of this. Is it the people are uh, the vaccine itself is an issue causing the autism and. The other groups, I said, no, it's lack of work. So how did the community uh, uh, respond to this study? Um, thank you for That's okay. letting us your, <laughs> your studio today. Um, the parent is different. Every child is different. Mm -hmm. and every ethnicity is different, so that's why the university, like Anna tell you, is or all those people who work together, making the f fit every child his need. Uh -huh. That's it. But but the community, and I'm talk about the Somali community. When yeah. they hear there is a study and here is the result, yeah. and here's some very alarming numbers, one in every 32. That's a very high number that has autism. Right. I mean, I mean, what is uh, culturally? 
I mean, as far as I'm concerned, all, oh, all, all, all children, small children. Sometimes the parent or the, or the people, they know their child. It could be a lack of language, mm -hmm. could be a lack of culture, could uh -huh. be a lack. And then sometimes they catch up fast than your thought, and sometimes they catch slowly. So it depends the child and depends the parent also. So, so there is no fear of acknowledging that the, your child has autism. No, that's why people don't the, uh, admit it or uh, deny it until it's too late. The both. Yeah. Some people do not. There's a, they have a denial. Some people they admit it. They realize mm -hmm. and they said, "Okay, fine. What can we do?" And some other people say, "No, I think it's this things. I want to do that side. I think it's this things. Well, I want to do this things." That's fine. That's why we have this study. Yeah. Would that study help the yeah. skepticals? Yeah, it helps. Uh, a lot of bad interfering. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, you know, what is the cultural components of the study? Was it bear in mind, you know, how, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I came from six, seven, I have six brothers, you know, the, the way they said uh, uh, the symptom for autism, I think all my brothers or us who are artis artistic, you know, when I see Somali kids running and doing all those things, uh, that's how what we do things. We're very loud, we're very active. Uh, is, this a, is this a factor at all on how the Western standard really try to impose certain standard on other ethnicity, other things of behavior? Uh, and then some, sometimes you misdiagnose uh, the cases. Um, or it's, it's just more than just behavior? It is, it's hard to say that a culture always factors into things in terms of measurements. When, when you do a sample, yeah. when you administer a test, you know, there could be a language barrier or there could be a developmental um, differences in how parents um, um, interview goes or how um, the child performs tests mm -hmm. uh, since they, that they're done on different populations. Um, the thing with uh, with autism, though, in um, especially when children are a little bit older, um, <coughs> that um, it's not based on one test. So if it, a culture could be a, a factor when you only meet with the child one time and you make a conclusion on that one time. However, when you're coming into a diagnosis of a ASD, you're looking at you're doing observation, you're doing a test. You're interviewing the parents. You're uh, you're watching the child. Many times, doctors will f have a visit and a second visit and observe and ask. You know, is the child's uh, like one of the signs for autism is the child might regret uh, regression. Mm. So they're looking at the developmental so stage. They're looking at the, the language behavior. stage. They're looking at um, social stage. There's certain things you expect children. They might run around like you said, Somali children. But there's, con there's uh, triggers with ASD that when those triggers are, are so obvious to, to clinicians, um, it, it really limits um, and narrows that cultural gap, I, in I'm my opinion. Saying, yeah, that's fine. I'm saying w uh, w what's normal now, normal, uh, as far as the white population in Minnesota, and, uh, almost 80, whatever, 90% white, uh, the normalcy and that it's a white normalcy. Wouldn't we compare it to within uh, Somali, what's normal in a Somali community? Yeah. Like a, a Somali child is different than the other Somali child. Yes, okay. yes. You know, the, the, there are also, the study showed that um, uh, also the intellectual uh, performance. And I, you know,